good. We're going. Welcome to the Rebel Love Show. We are a once a week broadcast from Manchester, New Hampshire, where you can find us at rebelloveshow.com. We are also syndicated on JREV and Voluntary Virtues. And of course, you can always find us on iTunes, Stitcher, and all that jazz. I am Rob Mathias. And I am Joel Valenzuela. And today we have a very special guest. And no, I'm not talking about Ash the Studio Cat. She's always here. I'm She's talking about. A <laughs> she's right in front of this camera. It's yeah, hilarious. I know. She doesn't want. To, she doesn't want to introduce you. She she's uh, she wants to be the star of the show. Tonight. I'm fine playing second. There we go. There she that. goes. All right, she's laying down for you. She's we, submitting. We to have you. none That's other than the illustrious, the all famous Matt Sibelowski. Yay! Oh. Clap, 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 clap. You've clap. oversold me, but thank you very much for having me. Hey, we're all human beings. We all have good, we have equal value in the eyes of the Lord and Savior, Spaghetti Monster. So. Don't give yourself some credit, right? Oh, thank you. All right. So, the big thing that Rob wanted to know since the beginning is why, why, why are you having this guy on the show, man? I and just want to know what we're going to talk about. Yeah, I just said he's an interesting guy. So, first, I hear you you hail from the land of gators. Well, I do not hail from, from the, the land of gators, but that is where I was located previous to my relocation for the Free State Project. How long have you been here? Uh, two years now. I was actually down in Louisiana working on the Ron Paul campaign, and um, as soon as it was over, I was kind of looking around, saw the, what the Free State Project had going on up here, because I was out here uh, a couple weeks for the primaries as well during the, the presidential campaign, and figured that this would be a sensible next step. Yeah, now, were, were you always kind of into liberty, or were you conservative and then went there, or were you kind of nothing, and then there was that aha well, moment? I mean, I've always sort of self-identified as a libertarian. I, I remember being like 10 years old, and I heard the term libertarian on the radio, and I asked my dad what it meant. And he said that it meant that you want low taxes, but you don't care what gay people do. And I was like, well, you know, I think that that makes a lot of sense. And <laughs> Again, I mean, for a 10-year-old, yeah. that, that's, it, that's about it. I don't really... <laughs> Since you know. then, I've identified as libertarian, but it was the, the 08 Paul campaign that really kind of kicked me into gear i'm sure that's a common story yeah most people most people get uh yeah awoken by uh mr dr paul so to rephrase for our target target audience basically libertarian libertarianism means keep all your bitcoins and hang out with Derek j exactly <laughs> there you go so for you it was like wow i like this stuff i want to get involved in the political machinery now would you describe yourself as like a Republican constitutionalist as that what you I mean I'm registered in the Republican Party I would just describe myself as a libertarian really um, I sort of see ideology as divorced from what party I happen to be registered as so are you just saying you're registered as Republican just because it's better than running as an independent or a libertarian it, it gives me an opportunity to vote in the primaries and kind of have a, a bigger say a bigger influence than if I was just registered libertarian, and you know, I can. It's not as though I can't vote for a third-party candidate in the general now. So, okay, um, I don't know. I I can't support now. It. Here, let me put, ask you this, Rob. You uh, you kind of came of age in terms of liberty through Ron Paul a little bit, didn't That's you? That's true. That's true. I you know what you're right. So, uh, it's how how am I? It's funny I because can't, I, you I can't two go, you two have more in common than us or us because I was how did you discover Ron Paul oh uh, I remember the first thing I actually ever heard him say was he I was, was hiding watching, in your closet and yes he came out and screamed free bananas and I was sold from then on <laughs> that's pretty but kinky right no, there I was watching uh, Bill Maher and he said that the first uh, act he would do as president was pardon all the nonviolent offenders in the US prison system and it just kind of like blew my mind that somebody who would say something like that at least actually had a, some sort of a reasonable chance of becoming president. And up until then, I had thought, like, oh, I'm a libertarian, so politics isn't for me. It means, you know, that's for all the people who want to divide up the spoils. Mm -hmm. um, but it was, again, the Paul campaign that kind of made me start thinking about politics differently. Politics. I see what you okay. did there. Yeah, well, um, and so, Rob, your thing with the whole Paul campaign, it, did you ever I, want to get involved with yeah, the Paul I did. campaign? Yeah, And you I, didn't? Uh, no, I did. I did... Um, I, I did some campaign work for Paul in 2012 in so Chicago. Part, you, you took part in the machine, too. I did. No, I, I did. Think we've and, then, and then I voted the for system. Gary Johnson, and I was I almost threw up because at that point I went through my six-month phase. And uh, 
I, I vowed I would never vote for a federal election, or I may bite the bullet and vote locally, but I'll never vote for a federal election again. I don't want to support that. But I again, I, I could go a state rep if it's a free stater. Mm. I'll I'll bite my pride and vote for a free stater. And Lord knows there's plenty of those coming out, which yeah, you know, there's a lot of free staters running. Yeah, no, that I don't. We gotta figure out who. How do you? This is going to be horrible. I don't even know what district or whatever I'm in. I have no idea. Hmm. I, mean, I don't even know if there's a free star r- running in this area or not. Uh, the map is incredibly complicated, and even if I could show you, it wouldn't help. But we'll talk about it afterwards. That they usually don't like to be outed Oh, I know. the election. I tr- so. Trust me. We're going to have a couple on the show after the election. I'm, <laughs> That's I'm, a good I'm time well, to have them. I'm well aware. There's multiple ones. We might have a couple on the show before the election I hope that so. I've talked to. Really, a couple different ones talked about wanting to be on the show. I would like. Well, I would like to get both Emily Samblade and Mark Warden. On the, Emily point. was my first thought as soon as you said having. Well, a she's already outed as a free stater, yeah, so it's, it's too, like it's too. I would be saying that out loud. That Mark Warden's not even. Run, yeah, he's not even re- running again. So mm-hmm. me saying either one of those isn't going to put. And it. again, it's not like his status as a free stater is Emily some Samblade. closely guarded secret. Emily Samblade last month was out there cop blocking <laughs> with us at a DUI checkpoint with an LED sign that said "cops ahead." So I. I have full 110% respect for her. <laughs> she calls anyway. it constituent services. <laughs> exactly, which is awesome. And, like, I posted that little meme on the now on famous cool social group. To all our viewers at home, don't go there. It's a dark, dark place. But <laughs> anyway. <laughs> if you can find it. <laughs> I posted, yo, yo, dog, I heard you hate governments. We had a government, hating government member of the government fighting government. So you can. I see you what you the did there. Yeah, it was, it was pretty funny. And the one thing I think thought was pretty incredible about New Hampshire is it's gotten a lot of politically apathetic people excited to get involved in elections, not through restoring their faith in electoral politics at all. No, they're just they're completely as cynical and nasty as they've always been. The difference is the possibility of getting people of the most hardcore philosophies actually elected into office with not that much effort and doing real legislative repeal. And I wouldn't say pass legislation because really we're just trying to get rid of well, stuff is, for the most it, part. It does seem pretty easy to get elected as a state rep in this state. I mean, relatively speaking. Relatively it, speaking you know, compared to any other state. In oh, the yeah. It depends on where you are, too. But one thing that's definitely true is it doesn't cost the money that it does somewhere else. It's you know more about actually going and talking to your neighbors than it is in another state or... Plus, uh, it only pays $100. Exactly. So it's pretty much volunteer activism. You still get people who go, you know, to make their head a little bit bigger, but you don't have the folks who are going to live off it, at least. Yeah. Yeah, and even then, it's like, how big can your head get? It's You'd like, be surprised. I don't think I would be surprised just because I've been in this world for just <laughs> long enough to see everything. But still, it's like, what, you're one of several hundred mm-hmm. in this teeny state that's like the backwoods armpit of Massachusetts to a lot of people's brains. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's not like there's prestige. Yeah, but again, like when they're in the fishbowl up at the state house, they, they tend to Oh, they get their little badge and their little license plate. Yeah, exactly. and oh, 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 they're so great now. I yeah. believe free parking comes with that $100, too. So and free let's tolls. Let's not forget that. And free tolls. And I understand that you cannot be arrested on your way to the state house unless it's a felony. I don't know. That would be something to look into more. I don't well, know. I know one thing: you can run over uh, birds as much as you want. Ducks. Ducks. Yeah, if that's what you're into. Waterfowl. <laughs> that was a big foul right there with the waterfowl. Um, yeah, for those for the listeners at home who are unfamiliar, there's some ducks in Grand Plaza National. They got squished by someone who's a bad person, pep. and fellow fellow um, political machinery activist and free and stater, and my coworker Keith Michael. Was obsessed about the ducks forever. He just would not let that go. This is profile did, picture did you, for months. Did you see the YouTube video of the um, of the uh, the duck of memorial service? I saw that. Did I you mean, see it? the duck murderer has since decided that he's not running again. So I, somebody did something right. Maybe maybe it was the memorial video <laughs> Keith put out because that that was pretty powerful. He, he just couldn't take it. His conscience was it's, overcome. It's, at some point during his talk, they faded out. To the duck swimming in the, in the pod while was he was still awesome. talking. A single tear rolled down everyone's cheek. Everyone's yeah. feathered cheek. But one thing I, I think it's interesting, though, didn't the police chief in Manchester 
resign. I mean, in Nashua, well, resign. That was over in there? Nashua. It wasn't the chief there. It was some position lower than that. I, I want to say commissioner, but I'm. I'd just be talking still out of my a, ass. Still, still a high point. position. But yeah, someone because the person who reported it called it in, and they kind of swept it under the rug at first. Um, but then the tapes got out, and then obviously that looked bad for the Nashua Police Department. Yeah, and that's one thing I like is just a few concerted rowdy activists can really cause some serious shakeup in this small pond of a thing. And I noticed that when, also on the subject of Nashua, when the, um, Joe Biden was doing his 10, 10 an hour minimum wage hike tour, they brought this bus to Nashua and they were going to do this little press conference thing with no audience, just like... Until we shut them down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, until just, and it wasn't even, well, a bunch of free state, we need this this concerted effort and this it was like hey this is happening tomorrow the two of us are going can we can anyone else want to come and then we crashed it and gotten all the papers and it's like just such a derailment from just like a couple of people showing up with some handmade signs a couple of which weren't even relevant to the issue i mean i had one that was like minimum wage is too damn high and then he was like thanks obama and that was kind I of was all trying to be edgy but i don't think it was it, it, but it, stupid it was funny and semi on point and then the other couple of people came were like U.S. out of N.A. Just like what, and then you no know, stop all the wars, and it's like wait, wait, wait. this is an anti. Yeah, confuses your message a little bit. I think that you'll find that as we get into like the next year or so, that your ability to gain media for just these little things is just going to skyrocket as everybody looks here for the presidential campaign. I am very uh, excited about this presidential election because I want to be able to go around and film all this stuff going on. That's the only reason why I'm excited is like to be able to like try and get ambushes or like you know what i'm saying because mm -hmm. i know there's going to be all this kind of stuff oh, going there's on there's going to be plenty of opportunities yeah there's so many that. so many opportunities to make to make videos Chris that christie's going to be up here already like next week week after good mm -hmm. opportunity yeah. the land of dunkin donuts i mean the man can't keep himself away you know but that that's one thing because it's been a relatively fertile ground for entrenchment of the liberty-minded because there's already sort of a uh mindset in this state it seems that's very conducive to that. At the same time, it's also such a small pond and easy access electoral uh, situation that it's so easy to get such a strong presence of the most hardcore on our side. And so then what happens when the presidential election rolls around, there's the New Hampshire primary, it's crawling without a staters. All of a sudden, it's like it's so easy to get a, such a strong national spotlight on the most hardcore and edgy stuff we have to offer. Yeah, uh, Will Kostrick went on MSNBC and debated Chris Matthews after he open carried at an Obama event, and he came off looking incredibly good, I thought. And It's a legend in these parts. Yeah, uh, it gives you opportunity for plenty of stuff like that. I've had a couple people, like locals I've run into. Um, <laughs> there, There is a time, okay, because Antigone's with whatever. And um, I went with her to... Um, some media like new hampshire media um conference or whatever like new, just it was like a, at a museum blah 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 and everyone gets to introduce themselves and it was, i was with carlos as well so all three of us inter introduce our shows which are all free stater ryan shows <laughs> you know back to back to back at this thing and a couple other people came up like that are like newsy people and stuff like that and, and we get into a conversation about free staters and he's like yeah w that one time when that w w i think he was a free stater he was open carrying at that obama rally and taking it just left and i'm like you do know that i know him personally like he lives here in manchester da, 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 like, and, whoa. and he's he's like oh man what was the general tone of their you know bringing that up he was uh it wasn't like he was upset about it he just knew about it like he he was familiar, like a local knew that this happened in New Hampshire. Like he knew of that, and he knew it was a free stater. Well, like the outside people know about that too. And like I I was, it was one of the few videos I watched before I came out here, and was like, wow, that that guy's a badass. And so I go move into the quill, and then I see this guy there. I'm like, oh, aren't you? I'm <laughs> like, there he is, right there, right in the flesh, you know, and not in like. You know, you sh I actually did not know that was him until after I got here. And then I knew of it, but I didn't know I didn't know that was him. I was just your mind was... balloon? I'll be honest. There's times I come here and I still discover stuff that I never knew before, like the whole uh, chalking the police thing that happened in Manchester a few years ago. 
I never knew that even happened. Yeah, and, and I know Will's been talking about developing a wiki or something so that there's a better documented history of all that stuff so that new movers kind of get a better that's feel That's what for we're it. trying to do right now. Yeah, that's why we film everything. That's why we write about everything. That's why we Instagram everything. Just It all has to be out there. It, because I, I know, I, I've said this before. Sometimes I feel like I'm a modern-day historian in regards to like just putting out a post or a photo or whatnot, living through, going through all these events and stuff like that, because it's documenting like mm -hmm. this building and building and building. It's yeah, uh, documenting mean, that whole story. Who knows what some early movers did? You know, awesome stuff that we is just forgotten Don't. and we'll never know about. Yeah, like this case in point. What the hell is going on in Grafton? I'd like to know. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is <laughs> I'm it, brother. I talked it. to them at Porkfest. I'm like, great. You guys are doing a whole bunch of stuff. Why don't I know about it? Why don't I see a video or a, or a, a blog post? And their response was like, well, we're not on Facebook. <laughs> I'm like, My well, God. you got you want to tell the world you got to be on all the platforms. I'm like, I have a Google Plus. I got a Facebook. I got a Twitter. I got an Instagram. I got a YouTube. I got a. a you, Snap, you know, Snapchat, Snapchat. Let's say it. I mean, there's some legitimate reasons, you know, if you're trying to go incognito or something. But I don't know how to use social media is not a very good reason. Yeah, I mean, especially if you're if you're doing activism in New Hampshire and you want to inspire more people to move, you know, if you cop lock a, a, a cop and there's no photo or video of it, did it ever happen? Yeah, if there's no e earned media, you know, did did you do anything that actually accomplished anything? Yeah, like the only thing I ever hear about Grafton is like third hand from somebody. Oh, cool, yeah, the part of the city council got taken over or something. Yeah, I don't know. I've heard. And I've also like, heard. I've slipping. heard. I've heard. Yeah, I've heard these things. I don't even know because I have no coverage from mm -hmm. Grafton. And again, yeah. I can understand that maybe you know you don't want that narrative of the free staters are coming to Grafton to take over. To really, you know, go out but there. But you do but want that na narrative to free staters. At a certain point, yeah, it the depends cat's on, out of the it bag. Depends on, it depends on your audience. That's true. You know, I mean, you can get negative press within New Hampshire, but at the same time, it would inspire more people to move here because of that negative. Case in point, the whole thing with what Cynthia Chase. Literally yeah. triggered my move right there. Uh, case in yeah. point, negative uh, in-state. You know, she's not technically an in-stater, but in-state negative press that inspired this guy to move it's all sort of a balancing act you know the question is is whatever you're doing making it easier or harder for us to promote liberty here and on the one hand you're making it easier by bringing more people who are like-minded but if you're pissing off the people who are in the middle uh, you, again you got to just kind of weigh on an individual basis I think for each um, amount of activism you do yeah and like one thing I noticed that I mean some people just don't know everything but there's there's people who move here right and then we and never hear. Then we never hear about them. They disappear. They're just oh, and then like they come out of the woods like with like a three foot beard and like a Wilson ball and just like oh, is this the quill? And it's like, where have you been for the last three years? And it's like they don't never have a good answer. And it's like, how do you move here and just disappear? Because they probably aren't on Facebook. No, but even so, I mean, you could just like stumble around and then see a porcupine magnet on a car and the person getting out of the car go oh, especially hi. in Manchester. You go oh hi. I like I'm a porcupine too. Let's talk. And I'm not a fed. I swear. That happened to me up in Guilford. I, I, I mean, all the all the way, I all up, the fucking I way up in Guilford. Get, I saw a guy getting out of a car, and I had a, a Free Talk Live bumper sticker. I'm like, hey, are you you are you a free state? He said no, but he's a he's a, a native that loves the Free State Project. And free like, stater, he, if you will. He's not like a free stater. Like free stater people that move beforehand. Like he's just a straight up. You know, born yeah. and raised mm -hmm. New Hampshire. Um, for example, Greg Moore could be counted as a pre-stater because he moved up for liberty-related reasons before. And Nate, buddy Nate over there, brother Nate. <laughs> no, no one can see you, Nate. No one, <laughs> unless you lean onto Pedro's shoulder, all romantic-like. But uh, anyway, yeah, you're a native. You're a native. So it's not like you're a you're native. A uh, native. Uh -huh. yeah. a nat right, well, oh, there I we go. I think I've done my job here. <laughs> <laughs> by exactly. You're a native. You didn't move here. You just kind of were here. So that's what they call it, a you know friendly native. A uh, pre-stater is someone who moved in um, for liberty-related reasons before there was a free state project or before New Hampshire was chosen See, as that's a state. How I thought that pre-stater was someone who was here before. I guess I'm mm -hmm. not up on the nomenclature. Now, there's one no, more. Okay. There's, there's a re-stater, all right? A re-stater <laughs> is someone who left the state and then came back for liberty-related reasons. Like maybe a uh, native who left the state, and then when they came back, they, they restated. 
Now, at, at any rate, I ran now, into this what guy is a double, class, by the way. I, 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 <laughs> I, I just want to say, I just want to say, I want to institute a new term, which is a double restater, who like left and then came back, then left, then came back. <laughs> Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm done. That's too much. G- talk about your Guilford guy. Come on. I don't know. I saw him at Porkfest. It was cool. That was about it. Yeah. But so... Is there <laughs> <speaking> <laughs> back to that. I don't know why you brought it up. But oh, Spe- uh, Speaking of Bigfoot, um, has anyone actually seen a wild Dave Ridley in his natural I, I, habitat? Oh, my God. Yeah. I've I've been here since January. I have not met the guy. I've had Facebook conversations. Dave Ridley, hey, how's it going? You know, maybe we can go have coffee, talk about filming and your H- and your lack of an HD camera. All right, um, but no, I've not. I've, has anyone ever? I, I've seen is, him up he around exist? the state house does doing he, those kind of ambush really? interviews with the reps. Uh, I think that that's it, though. Okay, yeah, that's the only thing when he's out when he he leaves his habitat to hunt, and then he comes, he gets his prey, and he brings it back and like feeds in the wild for. A I few just want to hand the man an HD camera. That's what I want to do. Dude, I look, love his work. Ian was as ta- crazy as it is. I love his work. Freaking dot com. <laughs> Well, yeah, like Ian was talking about that. He's he says, "Look, I got a camera. I'm gonna give it to you, and he won't use it because he's stuck in his." Well, he's a weird guy. I'm not. I'm not gonna spend another no, show. I know. We ranting about, about this too. guy because he has so much coverage. Like he, he. I move partially because of seeing stuff that Dave Ridley was posting. I know I Rich Paul want, moved because of stuff Dave Ridley posted. Exactly. Like he inspires people to move. I just want people to be inspired in HD. <laughs> yeah, they're much more ins- inspirational there. Get him a co- GoPro camera and just like staple it to his forehead and just don't tell him, and then you'll be. <laughs> you see know all it. sorts of interesting <laughs> shit. Oh, uh, I think there's a lot I really, really don't want to see. I don't know what I just know. It's so like a prude. yeah, but speaking of like the whole disappear thing, well, how come we don't see you at any events or Quill or anything like that unless it's unless I drag you there kicking and screaming? I mean, I try to go, but part of it is just, uh, you know, working full time with all of you lovely people occasionally i like to like lots of libertarians be a hermit and you know stay at home and play video games and whatnot yeah hey <sighs> defensible too huh i don't know how you do that man <laughs> i came here to be a different person i used to be the mr video game guy i don't i i, I go out and live my life man. yeah get out there i used be, to be, play video switch games it up until you know i've tried morning. real life and i've tried video games and i think that i'm pretty confident in my decision <laughs> <laughs> is that why you're on is that why people go on the weed? It's just like, oh, real life is not. I go on it because I like it. Dude, that's because that's why I go on the booze. Because the booze makes the pain go away. At least I no, told it make, it makes me <laughs> it makes me enjoy life more, not make the pain yeah, go away. Yeah, me too. I'm just just messing. Now, here's a big question: the whole radicalism versus incrementalism. Which do you get more flack from? From people saying, "Oh, incrementalists, you're not a purist." Or from people saying, oh, you're too much of a purist. You should be more on board with the general Republican Party or things like that. Well, I have the lovely position of being, you know, placed where I get shit from people who are mainstream that, you know, I'm waiting for somebody who's perfect to come along. or yeah, that join I the club, am, brother. And then I get shit from the other side that, you're you know, that I'm engaging the system. in the system at all. That is a, a quote that I am familiar with. I'm f- from boning the system. You're man. supporting our oppressors. How dare you, sir? You're That's using you their know, money. It's not like I'm knee-jerk opposed to those views. I, I guess I like kind of understand where you're coming from as somebody who was once like the Are you super overzealous convert and then mm-hmm. kind of has moved back in the other direction since then. Are you participating because you want to do whatever you can to take it down from within? I mean, it doesn't even necessarily have to be take it down. I want to do whatever I can to lessen the boot of the state on people's throats as we go along. And I'm not a philosopher. You, I honestly am not. If you can get rid of that boot, would you? Oh, I, you know, I am not. I, I'm not. I'm not saying what you're doing is bad per se. No, I know what you're saying. I'm and just I saying how don't. how far off are you going to take that boot? Are you going to take it all the way off? And I just think that drop it? once we get the government down to you know twenty percent, ten percent, five percent of the size it is now, then I would be more ready to have that conversation than I am now. I think that now I am just constantly moving to make it smaller to make sure that less people are put in cages for ridiculous reasons well, and yeah. make sure that fewer people go off to die, you know, for nothing. And I uh, I sort of, sort of started this um, conversation earlier about uh, – sort of started this conversation earlier about the, the difference in priorities. Some people care about accomplishments in the cause of liberty, i.e., 
how much we actually reduce the size and scope of the state, how many people we save from paying usurious taxes, how many people we save from the drug war. And then there's other people whose judge of accomplishment is by how strongly in your mind you think it, man, how how pure your ideas are counts more like exam, you know, counts more than actual like lessening of of the act of the, of the ill effects of the state. It's like you can save 10 people from the state, right? Or you can save zero, but be totally more anti-state in your mind than the other people. Well, and there's there's always that sort of balance back and forth about how far do you go to maximize your effectiveness, uh, effectiveness without maximizing your inertia in a direction that's not entirely helpful to the cause of liberty. Well, I, I've said this before. Like For me, like I, I know there's two different types of minarchists out there. There are the minarchists that are all about you know restore the republic crowd. Which and I, here he goes bar barring my I, lines. Yeah. You're welcome. Cool. Okay. <laughs> I hate the re I used to be a restore republic crowd. You, you still gave some sort of legit legitimacy to the state. If you're a minarchist that just wants to get rid of as much as possible and help as many people be free, and that's it, and you're not saying that they have any kind of legitimacy, but you, it's just that other people think that, and you're just working within a system to do what you can, it's a completely different type of minarchist that I, I guess I can support. The problem being, most minarchists out there think about restore republic crowd, not, you know, I just want to do whatever I can to get the government out of everyone's life. But aren't you kind of assuming at people's motivations at that point? Like, do you really know whether they're saying that because they think that it's the most effective way to pitch liberty to a broader audience, yeah, or that they're just saying it because they believe it? Well, well like, I think Ron Paul did that. Well, Ron, like, uh, Ron Paul did. From my own personal perspective, you know, I was raised with the Constitution as old as, you, you know, <laughs> I mean, I like to see, you know. Forgive the crass. Before my balls dropped, right? I was already reading the Constitution, right? And Look so, at this guy. yeah, exactly, huh? And so I was all, always, always into that stuff from a constitutionalist perspective. I almost worshipped the thing as a super document, you know, like that whole thing. But with the point of view that government is evil, as you know, a lot of the founders railed about the government is evil. And the beautiful thing about the Constitution, in my view, is this is the way we keep government to the very minimum possible, and that's the good thing. And as time wore on, and I, you know, I still think that to a certain degree, except now I think, you know what, maybe, I, maybe my toes didn't touch the bottom of the pool. You know, maybe there's something beyond that a little bit. But this, the whole idea is, and I was always what you could call an anarchist at heart. You know, I mean, and from you know, I think kids are to begin with anyway. They don't like rules. But I, I guess the, the point of view, the constitutionalist point of view, for anyone with any, I guess. You know, I want to for the risk of offending people out there. With anyone with a shred, with anyone with an actual like depth of thought, the constitutionalist point of view is kind of the same as the anarchist point of view, just no. a little different. There we go. You're a what, fist that, what the hell are you talking My about? My questions are more practical. It's just if we kick out the people who have that constitutionalist point of view, then I, I feel like there won't be enough of us to effectuate no, the change no, that no, we no. want to see. Um, I agree from if I put my minarchist cap on for a second. I, I agree with you. It's What's a minarchist it, cap look like? It's called it, your it, thinking cap. Oh. No. <laughs> That's I'm just being a dick now. But no, I don't think constitutionalists and anarchists have the same point of view because at the end of the day, a constitutionalist believes that people, that people in a far-off land have some sort of legitimacy over your life. An anarchist does not. Now, mind you, both want uh, as much freedom as possible, but that is a huge dividing line between those two. Well, and like the sooner people in constitutions, I don't. Uh, again, like I can't, I can't be upset with an anarchist or a voluntarist running for office because if it wasn't for Ron Paul, I wouldn't be here. So it's really hard for me to say that don't operate within the system. But my point of view is, if you are going to operate in the system, you better not tell me that they have some sort of legitimacy over my life. That is my big drawing yeah. line. Now, in terms of actual participation in the system and things like that, um, the, phil the f if you ask me, I'm going to throw this in a, a fun... If you're if you're picking out a lifetime partner, a spouse, or something, maybe you'd care what they're deep seated, oh, what they think about the legitimacy of this. I just couldn't data whatever. But in terms of associating with people or what they do for the cause of liberty or working alongside people, so far I don't think we're at the point where that's a real difference. And let me put it this way: I don't believe there is such a thing as a difference between a minarchist and an anarchist so much as it is 
when we get to that final step, it's not going to be that difference. It's going to be the difference between anarchist and statist, period. It's not okay. going to – It's at that point, it's either going to be – Reduce the government even more, or keep it the same slash increase it. That's kind of the, the problem. Is most minarchists don't. Uh, why are you? Do, why do you, Who made you the minarchist spoke person? Because I used to be here. a minarchist. So okay? he knows everything that really. every no. minarchist has ever one, thought. One one minarchist. There's a lot of them from different backgrounds. Oh, oh, Not yeah, all of them came through the point. chemtrail background and stuff. Whatever. Hashtag hating. Yeah, you are a hater. <laughs> um, but no, with, like with Ron Paul and a few other minarchists out there, they advocate for no income tax, mm -hmm. period. I love that. The, prom the problem is a lot of other minarchists, and especially Republicans, almost all of them do not. It almost seems like you're saying that if you don't agree with somebody on the vast majority of the issues that you shouldn't work with them at all. Like I'm I honestly think you that shouldn't work we should work with, with liberals on anti-war or marijuana. I don't understand the the premise of the question, I suppose. I'm just saying if it wants my support in regards to my support somehow i'm not going to support someone that thinks that they have some legitimacy to steal from me well I mean, ron so paul did not think he had legitimacy to steal from me say that the well, uh, progressives no he did because he didn't advocate for the abolition of government government needs to be funded through taxes and taxes are not voluntary so yes he did advocate for a theft from oh, you man. okay not as badly then <laughs> there we go see it's all a matter of incrementalism and how much we got but I'd like to change gears because I've been thinking about sure. one thing and one thing only since the beginning of this whole conversation. Fish. I like fish. Uh -huh. I'm not going to lie. I'm a, a hobbyist aquarist like Nate over there. Nate's an aquarist? Uh, so I, why wasn't I told? This is information I needed to know. Well, that now you know it. Hey, I'll let you know just what you need to know and just when you needed to know it. So the big question that all the viewers at home, which I've used for like the fifth, sixth, seventh time this episode, and I think I need to switch to something more fresh. For everyone else listening, are you Aquaman? Sometimes. When I'm in the right frame of mind. When I'm swimming with my celestial Pearl Danios in their 10-gallon tank. Now, speaking of <laughs> the, the fishies, there's a couple of prawns in the office at the Americans for Prosperity office here in Manchester. Would you mind divulging their names? Uh, Charles and David Cray. Although David is now pregnant by Charles, so... Uh, we may have to reevaluate that. So, were they named? Were they or were they not named after the Koch brothers? I can n neither confirm nor deny that. <laughs> <laughs> so, how did you just get into fishies? Um, I don't know. I guess that it lets me, you know, take out my inner statist since I'm a minarchist and I like to, you know, control people's lives and whatnot. I feel like I'm God with the little fish town. You ever kill fish just to do it? Uh, set, put, put, set them in line. Uh, again, I can neither confirm nor deny that that. <laughs> Do you have a, an armored column of floor of sea seabed level submarines, and you ever just position a single prawn in their path, and just play out the Tiananmen Square incident over and over in your little aquatic kingdom? I'm not even sure what you're going for with that. I have no I, idea. I don't think I, I am what either. The hell you're talking about? I don't think I am either. But uh, that's a that's definitely an interesting thing. Now. But um, yes, my long-term dream is to open Fishy Lowski's fish store. We'll accept Bitcoin. Of course it will. Well, by that point, you know, it'll well, be... Well, everything will be Bitcoin. No, by that coin... Well, it'll we'll, be a cryptocurrency. Wh where do you stand on Bitcoin? You know, honestly, I'm not a techie. I don't understand it that well. But I've always sort of thought that it's technological progress that will really harm the state probably more than anything that we do from an activism perspective. It's just as time goes on the power of the state is going to naturally be eroded by the fact that physical location matters less and less. And as more and more of our lives move online, I think that people outside of our little fishbowl, if you will, will start to see that the state as an institution really doesn't have uh, much of a place yeah, now in you, modern society. That reminds me of a few debates I've sound had. sound like the anarchist now, though. Well, there we go, huh? You sound like a crypto anarchist. <laughs> well, you know what? It reminds me of a debate I had today over some another porcupine who's... Not just minarchist who's like conservative, kind of. And he hates those illegal immigrants. I roll. And, you know, okay, this whole border thing going on. Yeah. With like, it, bo it bothers me so much that I see these people that, like, I saw pictures of, like, Oath Keepers down there on the, on the border. And I'm like, hold on. You're defending freedom by going down there 
and preventing people from freely traveling, as in freedom to travel. And beyond that, some of these pictures of adults just screaming at the, you know, the children who are coming over. It doesn't matter, you know, whether looks even their horrible. position were right or wrong. It doesn't. It's not, it doesn't look horrible. It is horrible. Yeah. You know, it, for it, adults it to bully children, even if you know what they were doing was wrong, which I don't agree with, it's not their fault. And, and on top of that, even if you are a minarchist and libertarian restored republic crowd, the country was founded on immigration. Mm, it was yeah. founded. Let people move here without any restraint whatsoever. Who cares where they're from, whether they're from Asia or, or Mexico or wherever. Or let Poland. Pe let people just... That hurts. You know, <laughs> the Amish were immigrants. The entire, My grandfather was Amish. I don't even believe in the whole idea of a homeland or anything like that. This planet is my homeland, and I should be able to freely travel anywhere in my homeland that I choose to, and that's this entire planet. Mm -hmm. And the sooner like people, especially at least in this country, like get that point, like people should be able to come here freely. Yeah, now my connection to the issue is kind of personal because I grew up right on the U.S.-Mexico border on both sides. Yeah, as it turns out, in New Hampshire, it's not the most you know pressing issue. Yeah, no one gives a crap because there's no <laughs> There's not that many immigrants coming All to New Hampshire. All those dirty Canadians. The only immigrants that are coming here are free staters. <laughs> and, yeah, the invasive species. And we species. have to close the borders. Them porcupines, they're bringing, bringing their diseases. Anyway, uh, yeah, I grew up on both sides of the border, and so I had a lot of friends on both sides of the issue. And, for example, you know, I lived a lot with the illegal immigrant community who were just trying to go get better jobs and feed their families back home and all this kind of stuff. And I had a lot of com compassion for them, too. And at the same time, one of my uh, my family's old good old friends owned a ranch on the border, and he was shot and killed by a drug trafficker crossing his property, which spurred SB 1070. That he was the reason they signed that law that allowed for discrimination in Arizona mm -hmm. based on race because of the whole immigration thing. And so... There's a teeny bit. Of, the only bit of legitimacy in the whole immigration thing is some people go across private property and trash private property, but that's more of a government c causing choke points, and then yeah. it's a spillover. And then in that effect. specific incident, obviously you bring up the larger problem of the drug war and you know how its illegality is what's causing that violence in the first place. Yeah, exactly. And the the thing with the immigration thing that really people don't get their hand, heads around quite the right way is it's like they aren't the whole they we don't want them here they're invaders they don't we don't they're welcome here it's like really did you tell that is that what the guy who rented them the house said is that the guy who hired him to do the lawn said is that the guy who sold him crap at walmart said it's like no they're clearly welcome here by everyone who matters on their own respective private properties it's just if you don't like them too bad, because there's enough people who do who are willing to sustain them here. And it's like at that point, it's like, well, we the, as a nation collectively don't want them. And at that point, you're like, wait, do you believe you in lost me at we. Exactly. Are you communist? Well, the argument people usually bring up is, you know, that they take advantage They're of the jingoist. welfare state. But that's sort of a different, you know. But natives do, too. Be. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's like, well, I'm all right for white and black people taking advantage of the welfare state, but brown people, oh, no, we can't have that. Unless you know? they're second-generation brown people, then it's fine. Have you noticed there's a, there's a it's almost like a, an evolved version of jingoism with uh, locals about free staters in New Hampshire? Yeah, and I, that goes like, back was, to there, that. There was a, um, there was a uh, political cartoon in the Concord Monitor but this week where it showed these are our flags, and it showed the yeah, U.S. So. flag, and it showed the New Hampshire flag, and it said these are not our flags, and it had this flag, mm. and it had that flag, and it had a come and take it flag, which we need to get now because it was in the Concord Monitor, so we, yeah, we didn't represent all three yeah, of our, the, uh, not our, our flags. Our enemies yeah. have defined us, and so we must live yeah. up to their AFP expectations. AFP is a frequent target of the Monitor cartoons as well. I remember we had an anti-Obamacare event and they had a political cartoon of like Bill O'Brien standing up there talking about how Obamacare was so bad and New Hampshire was a disaster but there were like butterflies and sun shining and whatnot. I don't recall where in his speech he said that Obamacare was killing all the butterflies but but it just it just felt like such like almost political jingoism because mm -hmm. like those are flags that represent free staters. Yeah mm -hmm. and I'll I'll mention that I mean I know quite I mean, a porcupine definitely represents only free stairs really. Use but that. literally everyone I've met, like people I work with, my friends and stuff, basically everyone knows I'm a free stater. And no one really cares too much. I mean, the free stater's are like, yeah, you're one of us. Everyone else is like, either, oh, that that's cool, that's good, I like it, good for you. They don't give a crap, or they're like, 
yeah, you not whatever. Who cares? I'm still like they don't. They don't. No one really cares. I feel like sometimes our rhetoric can play into the jingoism though. When you hear people say things like you know come to New Hampshire and take over or something like that, that's exactly what they want us to be saying. Yeah, but we're not going to do anything when we take over. Yeah, but it, <laughs> it's just, just the, the very idea of it is, again, what it feeds exactly into the narrative that they want to portray of us. It's, well, it shouldn't be that we're coming to take over. We're coming to become members of the community and convince people of the rightness of our ideas, not to come in and enforce it on an unwilling you know, native populace. Yeah, and that's the thing is what makes a native? Because for one thing, there are a lot of people that have moved here. You know, yeah, that, you it's what 60 60 percent of adults here. I think were not born here. So somewhere it's an it's insanely high. In number. Arizona, it's like eighty nine or higher. It's like mm -hmm. huge amount, and it's uh, that's the thing is at one point you become a New Hampshire. At one point, are you from here? And that was that's a debate that's had in other countries. For example, there's a third generation Korean, I believe, in ja in Japan. Again, to our um, racist Western eyes, looks the same as the, all the rest of them, but his um, his grandparents came from Korea, and so his parents were born here, and he was born in Japan. I mean, here his parents were born in Japan, and he was born in Japan. Yet he's still not a Japanese citizen, and he's ostracized, has different rights, and that's like at at what point? That's insane. Well, Japanese are very jingoistic slash uh, xenophobic. Yeah, and it's well, which is weird because they really support Western. Let me put it this way: people. Japanese society and government it's is just fucked as up. far as the Japanese people I've known. They're not that way. But, again, it's so, same like, again, from the outsider perspective or from the political perspective, one would think that most Americans hate gays. They hate, you know, immigrants and things like that. And you go talk to 99.9% .9 of the people out there. They don't really care. Problem is there are those people out there, though. Yeah, one is the That's Westboro the Baptist Church. They tend to be louder. And although I feel like with the example of the Westboro Baptist Church, it's often people like us you know, promoting our counter protest to them that gives them legs to continue, you know, gaining media. They, didn't they say they were going to come to New Hampshire just this month and they didn't come? Yeah, they didn't show. All they want to do is, you know, have us bring them up in the news. I'm sure that it was exactly what they wanted, the response that they got. Yeah, it's sort of like if no one talks about Chris Cantwell, does Chris Cantwell exist? <laughs> you know, it's one of those things like, yeah, but. That's the thing. Was at so what point are we from New Hampshire? I think I'm from New Hampshire now. I've been here less than a year, I, but I this is where I want to. This plant is my, my home. This is my flag. Bam. Yeah, this is my As home. As someone who's been here for two years, I think that you'll understand once you cross that mark that you are not a true New Hampshire native now. Yeah, well, a, well I'm an incubator. You know what I'm saying? It's uh, like I'm being facetious. Well, yeah, well, there we go. Well, that's the thing is, it's like at some point, oh, what happens if you're from New Hampshire, but you moved and you lived everywhere else, and then you came back? Are you like, it's like, why aren't we just yeah. like why all people? Why does it even matter? People don't care here. Like the last Republican candidate for governor, Ovid Lamontagne, his campaign slogan was, I am New Hampshire. And he always talked about how he was like fourth generation, 14th generation, whatever. And I just thought that that was atrocious messaging. Uh, nobody cares here if you are New Hampshire or if your great-great-great-grandmother was here. Because, again, 60% of the adults weren't born here at all. So uh, how many were here, you know, two, three generations back? Probably a negligible amount. Yeah, I mean, who really cares? And that's one one heartening thing I've noticed is in opposition, opposition to free staters, there's been no actual – there's been almost none. I, mean, I can't say there's been none, but there's been almost no – actual points or grievances brought up it's there's been no they want to take out social programs we like our social programs they want to take out the police that we like there've been none of those kinds of things it's been most 99% they're not from around here and they want to take over what we have and there are outsiders and for, it's like been no and so i mean it's like if they were all pro all the things they're for, all of a sudden they wouldn't be outsiders anymore. I don't it's know like, about that. I think that if you look like in the more, you know, far left sort of blogosphere and whatnot, the Susan the Bruces and the other kind of um, far out there progressives, that they definitely do attack free staters. A on, lot. You know, they want to get rid of the government, what have yeah, you. Yeah, that's a little bit more in the internal circle jerk of their own yeah. communities, not to the it's public. It's to whip up their own side, yeah. you know, with the, the fervor. You the know, reason it's not, not in, the, in the public is because in the public eye, then they'd have to have a debate on the issues, and yeah. they get crushed on the and debate again, on the issues. And again, if you go around, you know, complaining that we're not from here, but you were born in Maryland, you know, uh, it sort of proves that you don't have a leg to stand on. I think yeah. that I don't believe that Annie Custer was born here or Carol Shea Porter or Hassan, 
And uh, again, so what's what's the difference that you moved Definitely here for a Cynthia different Chase. different reason? Yeah, and that's the one thing when people ask you like, why did you move here? And you know, depending on the audience, you know, I have a slightly different answer. But the answer, the standard answer, is I like the state. And I was here moving for a better life, and that's true. Yeah. I did move here. I did sign as for the Free State Project a year later. I moved. I did move, and I'm sympathetic. And I'm part of the group. But I that wasn't the only reason. I didn't like, oh, I love it where I am, but I want to move for liberty. I fell in love with the way the state looks. I fell in love with the climate here. I was looking to move for a better life. This is a, If there was no free state project, I would probably still want to be here. You wait, know wait, wait, wait. The climate. You spent the last couple of days bitching about the heat. Yeah, but the hey. The heat? After the exactly. winter we had? You're from, no, Arizona. from Arizona. I love, I love that cold weather. It's a dry heat. Well, yeah, you're not used to humidity. That's the thing. I just am. wait till next month. Remember, next month is going to be. I lived in D.C. for a couple of years. D.C. is oh, that's very humid. Is similar to New Hampshire, but hotter. And it's hotter. awful for a host of other reasons. Well, yeah, but the other thing is, I had to wear a suit to work every day and had no car in D.C. Ugh. And so I'd be walking around in a suit and tie, all just like, oh, getting gross outside in the summer. And here, at least, I get to wear like a t-shirt when I walk outside, and I get to drive a lot of places. And it's not, but still, it's like. I don't know. Maybe we should move to Nova Scotia where, like, Halifax, it's, like, a low of, like, 3 in the winter and it's a high of, like, 71 in the summer. It's just, like, right in that nice little, like, you're always wearing your little sweater vest all year long and it's, like, just a nice controlled temperature. All right. Well, you heard it. We're all going to pick up and move to Halifax now. Yeah. Well, I guess my my point in bringing that up more publicly, because, you know, obviously I can take a little bit of heat in gears. Takes a cool cat to stand the heat after all. Desert Link's tagline. Anyway. It's my point in saying all that is to just bring up the thing that there's so many people that bitch about the cold, either not so much when they move here, but mostly before they move here. It's like, oh, isn't New Hampshire cold? Oh, all that snow. Oh, those temperatures. Oh, I couldn't. It's like, just come here, wear a proper coat, and just stay out, yeah. stay inside at night, and you're going to be fine. Also, stay south of Concord. Don't go up north or it might get chilly. But as long as you're, like, conquered or south, you, you, you put on a coat, you're just fine. You just suck it up, you pussy, you know? People have managed here for a long time. I, I don't think that the, the cold is that big an issue. People have managed in Chicago for a long time. Millions of them. Yes. And I it have. sucks in the winter more than here. No, yeah, the winter in uh, Chicago is a lot worse than the winter here. Well, but then it heats up in the summer. and Oh, it gets into the hundreds in August. Yeah, I still yeah. have no idea why anyone moved to Chicago, but a lot of them did. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm i glad I'm here. I, I actually do love, like, one thing cool with New Hampshire, like, for example, weather. the, the weather is actually nice. I, it's, the, the winter sucked because it, it was just, like, 30 degrees for, like, a month too long. This was a particularly bad one, yes. too, with all the snow. And all the snow. Like, there's multiple blizzards. But that was Especially that was if you much, don't have the right car for it, that can be a huge pain. I yes. spun out on uh, 93 one day coming home from work, like, in front of a semi. Like, I did, like, a 360. I, I was like half asleep, but that woke me up. I was up for like five hours after that because I, 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 the car literally turned around where I'm facing the the semi coming at me. Now, mind you, it was snowing really that's, bad, and we're both only go, he was only going like thirty miles an hour, mm-hmm. so I was able to turn around. And, but obviously, because I'm here, but yeah, it was a bad winter, bad snow, mm-hmm. and my car was not made for the snow. Another thing that's crazy here, like from like uh, adapting to snow, because I've driven in snow my whole life, because Chicago gets a hell of a lot more snow. Because where I lived, it was a lot of lake effects snow off of Lake Michigan. Um, there's no hills. There's no hills at all. Like, it's all flat land. It's plains. I mean, there might be a little hill where it's like this. Here, it's like you're going up almost like mountains, mm-hmm. that up and down, especially when I was working in the lakes region. And it's like, and it's no dangerous. It was dangerous. Yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, and there's no, there's not such thing as plowing here. And when they do, <laughs> and when they do, of. they don't even put salt down. They just put sand, which, yeah. to my opinion, does absolutely nothing. It just makes the <laughs> snow muddy, I guess. Well, yeah, I was in D.C. though when they got that four and a half feet of snow in a week, and it was just wonderful to watch those people try to deal with it. People with leaf blowers trying to clear four and a half was, feet of snow. <laughs> was that like Georgia and Atlanta when the, when they got like <laughs> they an inch of snow? Yeah. Was that uh? Was that this year you're talking about? No, that was um. 2010 or 2011 because what do they call it snowpocalypse some ridiculous media catchphrase yeah because this year during the whole snowy times up in new hampshire at the same time down in dc it was just about the exact same weather conditions oh geez and almost it was like a t- five maybe five degrees warmer and i remember because that's when i was driving down with shem and carla 
all the way down to DC for ISFLC, the International Students for Liberty Conference. And we went through the slush in Connecticut and everything. And it was it was kind of awful the whole drive. But one thing I like about the weather here, though, like just put it in perspective, like a month ago we went to the I, first time I had ever gone on the beach in, Al- in any ocean, well alone the Atlantic. I know it's Atlantic Ocean, but like, I'd never been to the beach on an ocean. You know, and it's like 90 yeah. degrees and whatnot. And then Pork Fest is up in the mountains and stuff. And it's like it's an hour like each way from get here. Some interesting extremes. Here. Yeah, you get huge different extremes. No, I love the state. I mean, just honestly speaking, I love the state, the climate. the Yeah, the, I, I do, too. The territory, the the charm. Uh, not very much charm around here in Manchester, but everywhere else in the state. I mean, may, maybe not. Methy, we need to change the hub. No, not not so much up, up there. We need to change the hub to Portsmouth. The hub? Yeah, the the, Ma- the free state hub. It shouldn't be Manchester. Yeah. Anymore, hey, you know what? I'm a little bit free coaster. I know I'm a little bit freaking. Yeah. All right. Well, guess what? We're wrapping up pretty soon. But one thing I definitely wanted to know is apparently this bad boy's supporting some ink. Oh, I am. Yeah, I thought that we said that we were slowly going to take clothes off as we got nah. to this point, so that it wasn't going to have to be so awkward. <laughs> Where's Nate playing the best slab bass when you need him? So as I said, I kind of came from the more radical side, and thus am sporting the Banksy flower chucker with the revolution tattoo to kind of remind me where I came from. Turn, turn. Oh. There you I go. Know. I right there. Right there. Like 18 cameras. There are a lot of professional different cameras. Operation. Yeah, this is like an NSA wet dream up in here. That's pretty cool. Well, now well, they know I have that. Thanks. Well, hey, it's just like There's nothing it's, wrong with this. It's a revolution. Yeah. Well, guess what? I have a little surprise for you guys too today. I was down in the lovely city of Trashwa, getting all put up. Ooh. I got my mover number. Oh, look at you! My Free State Project mover number right here, my forearm. Can't really see it, but yeah, you know where I am. I don't even know my mover number. Yeah, neither does this guy, but as soon as he does, he's I, I, I kind of know it. I got to talk to I'm not really sure Chris. how the whole process worked. I remember changing my address on the forum, and that was all I really did. <laughs> Is that how that works? Well, there's a lady, Chris Lopez. Yeah, message Chris, yeah. You talk to her, she'll let you, let you know what's she, up. She's in charge of the I'm database. here now. That's what matters. There you go. Yeah, I mean, I, mm, that's the thing. There's a lot of people because it's a crazy anarchist movement. It didn't start as such, but it is now. And God, see what the, I told the, the you cat. about this cat? Hey, she's not fucking up the well. cables. <laughs> dude, dude, we're gonna <laughs> fire you. Fuck we're up gonna, the cables. We're so gonna get she, a new. Get out of here. She, she lost. I don't. I've never seen her lose her balance like that. It's insane. I did. That's when she took out the cables. She says <laughs> that you've gone long enough. Okay. Yeah. That, that's yeah. That was, that was her uh, poem. All right, guys. Come on. Anywho. Um, just a little quick update before we go. Uh, we did a bunch of different activism, uh, especially with the f- Operation Arcadia. We're going to have video up on that and video up from Porkfest and all the cop block video stuff that's going on with the DUI checkpoints. And hopefully we get all some of that stuff up. It's all up on the Raw channel, man, uh, youtube.com slash mantra if you want to check out some of the raw video of everything we do here because it's uh, exciting. But at any rate, um, you can find us, all of our content, at rebelloveshow.com. And we're on iTunes, Stitcher. Go like us, subscribe, share a video. We kind of enjoy seeing someone share a video. It uh, gives us a little perk in the day. Yep. And uh, thank Matt for being on the show. He's uh, he's uh, adorable. Well, thank you for having me. It was great. All right, and we're Here's out. Just a couple sweethearts. Yep. yep. Peace. Peace. <laughs>